Look, I want you to imagine that you, right now, you have a beautiful house. A house that's so big, like bigger than the White House. This house, rivers, they flow beneath it. You have at least 10 supercars. You have a maid, you have literally everything that you can think of in that house, you have it. Now imagine that you know that this is your house, but then for some reason you decide that, you know what? This house is beautiful, but I wanna go sleep over to my friend's house because I miss my friend. But my friend is not so fortunate like me. So you go to your friend's house and your friend's house is like an average, the average Canadian home or the average US home. That's not like just four bedrooms, maybe, maybe less than that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I have to sneeze. I hope that wasn't so disgusting. But your friend is just not so fortunate, just like you are. You go to his house and he tells you, please sleep over. I'll give you one room, but just sleep over. But then this one night sleepover, it turns out to be like a whole year because your friend, he really needs you to be at his house and you just sleep over for a whole year. So you, you left your house for a whole year sleeping with your friend. How silly is it of you to be thinking like, this is my life now. I don't own a beautiful home anymore. I don't own all these beautiful supercars. I don't own any of that. What I own is probably just this, my the one bedroom that I have sleeping at my friend's house. How silly would it be for you guys, for any one of you guys, to be thinking that now this is your life. Now this is what you own. This is what belongs to you. This is what you have. Do you know what I'm trying to say? A lot of you guys, every single human, every single human, we came, we came from Jannah. We came from, from heaven itself. Adam alayhi salam was not created on earth first. There is, there is a whole reason where Allah created Adam in Jannah first and then brought him down. Like if our home was Jannah immediately, because Allah says that in the Quran, like I am creating a, a the human on earth. So Allah was already going to send us down on earth. But why is it that Adam alayhi salam was created in Jannah first and then brought down on earth? It's to show you that your real home, your real home is not earth. Your real home is Jannah itself, heaven. So all these things, that are promised to you in Jannah, you already have all these things. You already have all of it. You have the beautiful house, you have the mansions, you have multiple houses. Anything that your heart desires, you already have. There, There is a whole reason, Habibi, why there is an entire hadith that says that a believer is like a traveler on earth. We're just traveling here on earth and then we're gonna go back to our real home. Now, if we've done bad things in our life, like we've lived a whole life of sin, and we're so consistent on this sin. We're so arrogant on this sin. Yeah, okay. You've lost everything that you own. Now you're not going to go back to heaven. You're going to go back. You're going to basically go to hell. But for all of you guys that are... Like especially the Muslims. You've been promised Jannah. You've been promised heaven. Which means you already own all these things. By the way, I just realized I'm wearing my seatbelt. That's such low testosterone activity. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what I'm trying to say is that... The law of attraction. One thing that it got wrong is that even like the book the secret it tells people that imagine that you like you you have beautiful things imagine that like imagine your life being like whatever goal you have just imagine like you've already you're already living this life but what i'm trying to tell you is that you already have this life this life originally was supposed to be for you you own everything that's beautiful beauty is already for you authority majesty all these things is already for you that's what Jannah is. So then why are you guys like thinking, I'm always living in lack, I'm always living in this. You're being deluded by this world, thinking that this is my this is my home. That's not your home. Brother, Habibi, my sister, because nowadays some sisters are like, you keep saying, bro, this is, this is your home. Like Jannah is your home. All of you guys are coming, all of us, we're coming traveling by this, like this, this world. And eventually we're going to go back to our real home. That's why even there's a whole hadith that says, by the way, it's actually very hot in this car. You can tell I'm sick, right? But there's a whole hadith that says that this dunya for a believer is like a prison. Why is it for a believer, not a Muslim? For a believer, it's a prison just because the believer believes, knows that the real home is Jannah, that I own all these beautiful things, that the things that Allah promised me, they're all true. They're all true. None of it is a lie. And so my real home is there. So for a believer to be here, we're just like 
bro, like I already have so much. Like, like me being here is like this, like one tenth of everything that I that I own. That's beautiful. But for a disbeliever, it's like a it's like a heaven. This dunya for a disbeliever is like a heaven, just because they're like, oh, this thing is so beautiful. But they don't know that there's way more beautiful things that are promised to you that are coming in the afterlife. So this this think of it like the law of attraction on steroids steroids this is because this is the reality this is the beautiful reality and for those of you who don't believe me if you're a muslim and you don't believe me there's a huge issue bro because these are the things that are promised to us in the quran we've been promised jannah we've been promised heaven we've been promised all these beautiful things in the quran that talk about the afterlife we've been promised those things and there's a reason why adam like i mean bro like Allah does not make does not do things that don't have like a reason. Everything is made for a reason. So Adam was made in Jannah for a reason. And now we're coming back here in Dunya for a test. Literally just for a test. So we can go back to who we truly are. Now think of this. If you guys right now you start living your life from this point of view, like every like you own everything. Like this world is just like a living room that you're just gonna pass by it. And it's, it's all easy. Everything is easy. And you live from this state. Do you really think do you really think that you're not going to be getting anything that you want? That is why there's a hadith that says, when you put your attention on the afterlife, on Jannah, this life, this dunya comes crawling to you. So the things that you want, the money, the beautiful house in this life, all these things, they're supposed to be easy. They're going to come to you once you start living the world from a point of view, like, like you already have everything. And again, bro, life, your life, like your your dunya is like a mirror to you. It's literally a mirror to you. So if you're living constantly in lack, you'll notice that you'll basically create a life of lack. If you're always living like you're always rich, like you're, there's abundance in your heart, that means you're going to start living a life of abundance. So whenever you see somebody, their life is bad, just know that their life is a reflection of what's within. There's a whole ayah in the Quran that says, I won't change the state of a nation until they change what's within themselves. So when you change what's within yourself, what's outside is also going to be changing for you. So when I see Muslim people who are living a life of poverty, because Habib, most of us Muslims, we are living a life of poverty, which is very sad. But when I see people that are living in a life of poverty, all I can think of is that, and I mean, I truly mean this, but they're not living their life true to the Quran. They're not. Now listen, don't come here and tell me it's like not every Muslim is supposed to be a millionaire and stuff like that. A, mil a millionaire is not what I'm saying that should be your goal. I'm saying your goal should be that you can literally do anything. So your bank account, I told you, your bank account does not represent who you truly are. There are people, there is, there is people, Habibi, that are broke, but their mindset is like a millionaire, which means even if you're broke, you can still go and get beautiful things. It doesn't mean that you have to have a million in the bank account. It doesn't. There's no difference between a super broke person and a super rich person. There's a guy, what's his name? Di, Di, Diogenes? Diogenes? Whatever his name is. At the time of Alex, Alexander the Great. This guy was so poor, he basically used to like just sit by the by the sun and just absorb the sun. But this guy has such energy. He was a, basically, if he was in living in today's time, he would be considered a millionaire just because he can do anything. This guy would, he, he owned nothing. He has no money, but he can do anything. A rich person can also do anything. They're not living to anybody's terms. They're living on, on their own terms. So forget about, oh, I'm not a millionaire. Muslims, like, I'm a Muslim, but I'm, I'm not a millionaire. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that if you are a Muslim, but you can't do anything that you want, you can't just do this and then do anything that you want, then you're not living true to yourself. Just so you know, abundance, abundance, which is what everybody is, abundance is doing anything that you want, anytime that you want, the good things. Like if you right now, you can't go to Salat Jum'ah because you're like, oh my boss, bro, my boss is not going to let me. What is wrong with you? That's the easiest thing. You can't go and pray because you're going to be like, my boss doesn't let me. Habibi, what is wrong with you? If you right now, you can't go out on the street. Not the street, but like you see that parking lot right there. You can't go out by uh, at the parking lot and pray because you're scared. Are you really a Muslim? That means you're not living in abundance. Just so you know, these small little things... These small little things represent who you truly are. So if you can't do the things that you want because of fear of something, you're not living to your true self. So forget about the money. 
the money is not the only thing. But the person, by the way, the person, just so you know, who can go out anywhere and pray, not scared of people's opinions, that person is definitely going to have abundance in their life. The money, if they actually will, if they actually have the intention of making money, they'll go and make money because that person can do anything, anytime, which means their abundance. So this is the thing. A lot of us nowadays, we're so scared of everything. Everything. Like we have debts and we're like, oh, I'm so scared of the debts, bro. The bank is calling me, telling me, oh, you owe us this much. We're not going to give back the money. And we're like, oh, no, I'm so stressed, bro. Habibi, are you being serious? Are you really being serious? You're scared of, you're scared of things? You're scared of something other than Allah. And this is beautiful because I, there's a guy. I don't know if you guys know Brute DeForce on Twitter. This guy, he's truly living such a life. So this guy, he's a gambler, right? I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys don't know him. Forget about what he does and all that. He does haram things, but like, just look at the mindset, right? This guy's a gambler. So you see some days where he's at zero and some days where he's at a million. And this guy, he says, it's like, there's no difference, bro. I'll go to the steakhouse, expensive food, and even if I have no money, I'll still be able to eat food and pay for it. How? He just, what he says is that I would go and like, I would tell them just put it, put it on my tab and all that stuff. And he would convince them. So this guy goes and buys expensive steak or expensive raw milk and all that stuff without the money. Without the money. If you can't do these things without the money, you're not rich, bro. You're not rich. That guy, he'll see himself at a million one day. And at a zero one day, the next day, he'll be back at a million. That's the true mentality of a rich person. You go up and down, but you know how to go up and down. Like, Habibi, this is the beautiful thing. So now, what I'm trying to tell you is that when you live your life, like you already own everything, like the entire earth is like your, your, your living room. You'd go and you just put your bags normally. You take off your shoes normally. You go to a gym, you go to, a, to an expensive place. People wearing suits and stuff. And you would just go like it's nothing. All of it is nothing. Because tr the true reality is that all of it is nothing. And now imagine you know there's nothing and you know that there's something greater waiting for you. By the way, Muhammad if he willed, if he wanted to, to become a billionaire, he would have become a billionaire. But the money is not the value in this world. The money is not the value. He was living from the state. Like he, like everything, everything is easy. Everything is nothing. He owns everything. And he knows that. Our Prophet Sallallahu he knows that. If he, if he wanted to, he would have been a millionaire. They offered him the entire world. Everything was offered to him. He's like, no, I just need to get this message across. That your true home is not this world. This true home is not dunya. The true home is the afterlife. Where you own everything. Unlimited things you own, Habibi. And this is the beauty, man. This is truly the beauty of Islam. And most people are not, most people are not living like this. And it's like, why? Why aren't you living like this? Allah promised you so much. And you're disbelieving in the promises? Can you imagine disbelieving in the promise of Allah? Allah promised you these things. Allah says, He also like, forget about even these promises. Allah says, I'll give money to whoever I will without anything in return. So now why are you thinking that in order for me to gain whatever I want, I have to go through struggle and stuff? Why are you thinking you need to go through struggle to get whatever thing you want? If Allah Himself says, I'll give money to people, to any, like risk to anyone without anything in return. Why are you so scared of that? I remember even me, because I'm seeing people nowadays, I'm like, I used to be so scared of recording in public, because I'm like, oh, people are going to be judging me and stuff. I'm like, you being serious? You're scared of other people thinking things of you? This is the beauty, bro. When you start, when you start living, hold on. When you start living, my phone is getting overheated. When you start living from this point of view, anything that you want, you just will it and it comes. And by will it, it's like you can just make a dua and it comes. I hope you know. Listen, listen. This video is going on for long, but I don't care, bro. I don't care if you're still watching. That means you're interested in this whole message. If you make a dua, right, that you want $100,000, but you still don't believe that you can own $100,000, that dua is going to take a long time to come. And then you'll notice that as soon as you start believing that $100,000 is nothing, this dua is going to be accepted. In other words, if you make a dua that you want a beautiful home, 20 bedrooms and all that stuff, but you believe that you can't get that, you'll never get that. Now, when you start knowing that these things are nothing, and then you make a dua for 100K, a million, even a billion, and you believe, you truly, truly, in your heart, believe that you can, that Allah is going to accept such a request. You believe it so much to the point that even, like you believe that the sun is going to come out the next day, right? 
So if you have that much belief, that much conviction, then it's going to happen. Which means right now, if you're not, if you're making dua for things and they're not happening, that means that you don't believe that these things are going to happen. Now, once you start, that's why that's why there's a whole delay. That's why Allah takes a long time to respond to your dua because as soon as you start believing that this dua is possible, then it comes to you. So when you have conviction of the thing, then it comes to you. So why are you not? Right now, having such conviction of these things, when I just told you that your real home is the afterlife. Your real home is where you own everything. You already own all these things. The things in this life are nothing, Habibi, nothing. So when you you need to be looking at them like they are actually nothing, because they, they truly are. Even quantum physics, by the way, it proves to you that these things are nothing. It's just 99.99% empty space. That's all it is. That's all everything is. Nowadays, when you so when you truly know that and you have conviction of that. Not even faith. Forget about faith. You know, you know that these things are like like nothing, and then you make a dua from the state. Just watch how fast your dua is going to be accepted. Watch how fast your dua is going to be accepted. I remember I used to be, I used to I used to be in school, right? And I used to be like, is it possible to like get a hundred on a test without ever studying? Before I didn't believe it's possible. Now I believe it's possible. If you have conviction that it is possible and you make a dua for that, it's going to happen. How is it not going to happen? You have conviction. You have conviction. So how is it not going to happen? So again, this is this is the beautiful message of the afterlife, the promise of the afterlife. When you live your life with the afterlife in your mind, in your mind, everything else that you see is going to be easy. All of it is going to be easy. By the way, in the description, I have a video. Forgot the video. No, the video is going to teach you about ignored Quranic teachings. And this is one of them, by the way. These teachings are ignored. I was reading these teachings since I was young, but I was ignoring them because no one was talking about them. This life and the afterlife are connected, Habibi. They're connected. They're not separate. So I was separating them, telling people that just pray and focus on the afterlife and that's it. But no, Habibi, Habibi, you pray, yes, you focus on the afterlife, but this life is going to be good too. If you truly have conviction of the afterlife, why are you right now a Muslim, but you don't have abundance? You, you can't do anything that you want, any time that you want. Why? Why? You're supposed to be able to do such things. And it's not haram to do such things. You're supposed to be able to do such things. So, yes, in the description, there is a video that teaches you actually three, three Quranic teachings that once you apply them, like immediately as soon as you apply them, it's like imagine that the, the risk of the, the heavens, of the sky, is immediately going to come showering down onto you. Because by the way, Allah promised in the Quran that your risk is not in this life. Your risk is in the afterlife. Which means when you put all your attention on the afterlife, in the heaven, it's all going to come down to you. All of it is going to come down to you. So watch that video. It's going to teach you how to increase your risk. And it's all free. Inshallah. But yeah, bro, this is, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. No one talks about this stuff, but when you truly internalize it, you're like, I'm living life now on easy mode. Because life has always been on easy mode. There is a reason why it's called dunya. Because it's the lowest thing. It's the easiest thing, bro. Literally the, the easiest thing. Risk, risk, like money, was not supposed to be something hard for you. This was never supposed to be something hard for you. So I hope this was hopeful. If it was, maybe just let me know.